what do you do when it's too bright or too sunny outside or in my case pretty much most of the time you put on these sunglasses so what happens when it's too bright like this for the pocket free well you do the same thing put sunglasses on it and it just so happens that i have a spare pair with me twins now let's be honest that's probably not the most practical of things so it just so happens that freewell have saved the day and sent me these actual sunglasses for the pocket free or in real life boring terms nd filters right now i'm shooting in auto mode and i love auto mode on the pocket free i think it does a really really great job most of the time but the problem with shooting in auto mode is everything is essentially being adjusted automatically based on the scene around you and one of the things that's been adjusted is the shutter speed when you're in a bright environment like this the shutter speed just keeps going up and up and up to let less light go into the lens to balance the exposure and the problem with that is you're not going to get that natural looking motion blur and things might start to look a bit sharp and jittery to have full control over everything including the shutter speed you need to be in pro mode and when you're in pro mode you can adjust things like the iso white balance and like i said the shutter speed and the shutter speed needs to be set to double your frame rate so for example at the moment i'm shooting 25 frames per second so my shutter speed would be 1 over 50 if you were shooting 24 it'd be 1 over 50 as well and if you were shooting 30 1 over 60 and so on and so forth the problem is is when you're in a bright situation like this if i was to set if i was to set my shutter speed to 1 over 50 what's going to happen is it's going to let more light in to the lens rather than less light and i actually used to get confused about that because when you lower the shutter speed it lets more light in when you increase it it lets less light in which in my mind it should have been the other way around because when you adjust like a, a light switch if you turn it up it gets brighter if you turn it down it gets lower Am I the only one that used to get confused with it? But anyway, let's not confuse things even more. The lower the shutter speed, the more light goes into the lens. The higher the shutter speed, the less light that goes into the lens. So with your one over 50, that's a low number that's gonna let more light into the lens. And essentially, it's gonna look like this. So we're now in pro mode and I've set the shutter speed correctly to one over 50. Uh, and as you can see, things are looking slightly bright and slightly white. Well, I've got an ND16 in my hand, so if I pop that on the eyeball of the Pocket Free, look at that. <laughs> Blue skies, yeah? Toy Story skies. You don't get this here that often. So take in what you're seeing right now, but this is only possible because we've put an ND filter on the pocket free before that i mean this this shot would have been unusable look at that look at that just brilliant now apart from the obvious use of nd filters balancing the light coming into the lens the reason you're setting your shutter speed to double your frame rate is to create that natural looking motion blur that your eyeballs see in day-to-day -day life and like i said earlier if you didn't manually set your shutter speed and let the camera change it automatically when you're shooting in bright environments then it will shoot it up which means you won't get that natural looking motion blur in your shots now another time you're going to need to use nd filters is when you're shooting in a time lapse or motion lapse and let's say you were filming a time lapse of cars to get that natural motion blur in the cars and not have it look too choppy you're going to have to slow the shutter speed down and you're going to have to slow it down a lot more down no, slow it you're gonna have to slow it down <laughs> slow it down a lot more down slow it down a lot more slower than you would do let's say in a situation like this and when you slow it down it's going to make the image look very bright and very white and it just won't be usable but as soon as you whack an nd filter on it's literally like night and day included in the mega pack from freewell are polarized nd filters which essentially work the same as normal nd filters in terms of blocking out the light but they help reduce things like glare and reflection from metallic surfaces like windows 
or if you were shooting by water like the sea or in my case just puddles around you. And in the mega 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 pack you get various different strengths of ND filters including ND8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 and for those long exposure shots ND1000 and the polarized NDs come in different strengths as well ranging from 8 to 64. And then you have this little guy the light pollution filter. And I actually really, really love this filter. Um, even in the daytime, like you don't have to use this just at night. Like look at, with the blue sky behind me, and it's obviously fairly bright now, right? This is with the light pollution filter on. If I was to take it off, which is quite a task because my hands are so cold, but we're gonna do, do you know what? Okay, I need to put this down. Right, so this is with the light pollution filter on. Yeah, I almost think it adds a slight purple tint, just slightly, right, on. Off. Wait for it to balance itself back out. There you go. So this is with it off. There is a slight difference. Surely you can see the difference. Let me, right, so this is with it off. It's easy to put it on. So I'll just sew it on. So this is with it off. And this is with it on. Mate, I can see the difference in this little screen. I really hope you can see it in the screen you're watching it on. This, this is a great, great, great little guy. You might think the main use for the light pollution filter is at night when there's loads of lights around you, especially if you're trying to capture shots of the night sky. Well, let me tell you that there is no rules. If you want to use it during the day, then use it during the day. At night, it definitely does what it says on the tin. But if you like the look of it using it in whatever setting you want, then just simply use it. And it doesn't stop there. Included in the pack, you have this, a mist filter, which essentially is going to soften the image or some would say make things look very dreamy. So if I put that on now, how am I looking? Looking nice and soft, am I looking nice and dreamy? The mist filter can be used day or night and like I said, essentially it softens the image and gives it more of a natural look. It helps with skin tones and at night it kind of adds like a glowing effect around lights and just makes it all like hazy. Hazy? Yeah, hazy. Just a quick tip when using the ND filters or any filters for that matter, because they're so fiddly to take on and off, I'd be surprised if your fingerprint doesn't get imprinted on the actual filter itself, meaning that when you put it on, yeah, it could make the image a little bit weird when you probably wouldn't realize until you watch it back later. So what I'm trying to say is make sure whenever you put a filter on, you give it a wipe. So any fingerprints that may have transferred are gone. Now I know what you're wondering, are the filters stackable? Well, yes. So essentially what you could do is you could have an ND filter on and then you could put the mist filter on top of that or the light pollution filter on top of that. So yeah, they are stackable. The gimbal head works perfectly fine with any of the filters attached to it. In fact, you can turn off the pocket free with a filter still attached to the lens. The gimbal head doesn't lock fully in place, but it does lock in place enough for you to be able to put it back into the hard case. And if you think the Mega Pack is a little bit too mega for you, I mean, it's definitely the biggest ND pack I've ever had, then Freewell do offer smaller packs. You can get a pack of four, a pack of eight, or this, the pack of 14. If you wanna buy the light pollution filter or the mist filter on their own, you can. So a must have accessory for the pocket free, ND filters. If you want full control over everything to get that natural looking motion blur and cinematic feel to your videos, yeah, you're gonna need some of these. Everything I've talked about in this video will be linked in the description below.